Hello YouTube. This video was originally going to be me vlogging stuff I did this week, but half of the things were a bust so I didn't have enough footage. So instead I'm going to be showing you like my weekly maintenance routine, like my hair, my skincare, and what I do for my nails and like just little tips and tricks. So this video is definitely for the girls. Um, sorry to the guys watching this if anyone, if any guy even clicked on this. It's hair wash day and as a lot of you guys know I've chopped my hair ugh, probably like 10 times in the last year because I'm trying to get rid of the dead hair that was once platinum because I was platinum for two years straight. It has been a struggle. You can even see I still have this dead hair here, but below, like the darker hair is my hair, my um, natural color that's coming in. It's coming in healthy. I think I'm done cutting it because I'm done with having short hair and I feel like it's at a point where I can grow it out. The dead hair is not too much. I try to oil my hair. Well, now I'm trying to oil it twice a week. Do I look cute? But I usually oil it. This it looks ugly. I usually oil my hair once a week, but I want to start doing twice a week since I have to wash my hair twice a week anyway. I feel like because it's it gets oily fast for some reason. I feel like yeah, the healthier it got, the more oily it gets since it's not as dry. But I go in with this rosemary oil. So one full dropper of this. Wait. I think it's not getting it all. One full dropper of this, and then one full dropper of this Fable and Main. I've been hearing from people saying that this has toxins in it. So if anyone can confirm that, I would love to know. Oh wait, I think I'm supposed to massage my scalp before I put the oil in, but it's okay. So yeah, you're supposed to massage your scalp for five minutes before you put the oil in. And I just run it through my hair like this. I have like little bald spots here. I don't know why, like I have baby hairs here, but not baby hairs here. Anyways, I put extra like on my bald spots where I want more hair to grow. And honestly guys, I've never seen hair oiling not work for somebody. It, it's a long process. Like it takes people a really, really long time to achieve like the really pretty hair that you see on social media. Media, but I think it's worth it. Like, I probably won't get to the length that I want until like four years from now, three years from now, but at least I will be able to enjoy thicker hair in the process. Because hair looks so much better when it looks thick and healthy. I'm going in with this shampoo thing to massage my scalp. I've seen this girl use a bamboo brush. That was, I don't know, I feel like this is as effective. I think I need to be a little more gentle though. Anyway, so I stimulate my scalp and then you're supposed to massage it in with your hands. A lot of people also put the oil on their ends, but since I'm like going out and getting my nails done, I wanna maybe do like a slick back or something. And if I oil the ends, I don't wanna look too nasty going out, you know? You wanna, I wanna look like it's intentional. Anyways, I'm gonna massage this in my scalp for five minutes and then probably put my hair in a hairstyle. And then I'm going to head off to my nail appointment. Getting my nails done and my toes done. Ew, there's a hair on my hand. Well, not ew, because I'm actually touching my hair. So for my nails, I usually go every two weeks, which I know is not realistic for a lot of people. And I won't lie, it's an absurd amount of, uh, it's, it's an absurd amount of money. I think, I feel like I can deal with doing a pedicure once a month. So hands twice a week, pedicure once a month, maybe every three weeks. It is expensive. Like sometimes you have to put away money for yourself, you know? Cause when you look good and you feel good, I personally think that's something that it's worth spending a lot of money on. Even if the prices are freaking crazy, like 170 for some, a gel pedicure and a dip or hard gel manicure is Kind of crazy to me but it is what it is getting to that point i do hard gel my nails because i thought that it would keep them healthier but i feel like it just keeps it the same way it damages them in the same way that dip does so i guess it doesn't really matter but i do notice that hard gel looks much more natural because they i think it's thinner than dip so that's what i'm going back to today this is dip on my hands i have been cheating on my nail salon but i'm excited to go back to it now um and then i do a gel pedicure because it just lasts so much longer especially in the summer when you're doing stuff like you don't want it to chip and the gel it also protects your nails a little bit because it makes them thicker so they're less prone to breaking because i oh my god i hate when one of my toenails breaks because I feel like it takes forever. My hair has come a long way, guys. Even though it may not seem like it, it has come a long way. I've had to cut off, not 10, maybe eight inches in total over the past year. My hair was literally this short, June of last year. It was this short. So over a year, it probably grew like that much. And I've just been constantly cutting it off and off because I want the dead hair off of my freaking head. I honestly think that I'm just going to slick it down with this brush and call it a day. Because I feel like with a bob, you can afford to do that. 
because it looks like a slick back or a slick down. But I feel like with longer hair, you can't do that. So I'm going to enjoy this while it lasts. Mm, I actually don't know if this is acceptable. Do I care? No. Also, a lot of people, I'll post my nails at the nail salon sometimes. And they'll be long, and they, they'll they ask how I get my nails that long. It's literally just putting hard gel on them constantly and letting them grow under. So I don't get, well, I have tips on right now, but I don't get tips usually, and I just let my natural nail grow out and put the hard gel on top of that. And hard gel is not Gel X, by the way. So it's not the one that they take the plastic nail and put it on top and then cure it. It's like, it's kind of like dip where they build it onto your nail. But it's not a powder, it's just the gel. I don't know what these brushes are called. But I get one of these brushes and if you do slick backs, this is going to save your life. If you do slick backs without, with a normal brush, I don't know how you do it. I use this. You can pretty much find it anywhere, but this is great for taming your hair, making it smooth. I just finished getting my nails on and a lot of you guys aren't going to like them. I don't know why I like them, I think I just love. I like thick French. Even though it's super th tacky, I'm not sure why I like it. I know it looks tacky, but it, maybe it just reminds me of the 2000s. But I got yellow French tip with chrome. You see how the French tip's super thick? Also, once it grows out a little bit, it'll look better. I hate when I have thin French tip and then it grows out and like the, the tip just looks too thin. These are pretty thick though, but I don't know why I just like them. And I don't know why I went with yellow. I just, something came over me and I just wanted like, I'm always with the seasons, okay? I get dark in the winter, fun in the summer. It's how it works, how I have to do it. I've been loving neutrals a lot though lately. So I sometimes regret it when I get color, but I think I like this. It reminds me of Beauty and the Beast like Belle. The French tip is just a little too thick, but it's okay. This is DND color honey. It's 845, I think, with white chrome on top. And this is dip. I didn't get hard gel because she just did a fill and it's just faster. So, And I got French on my toes with chrome. I'm not going to show you that, though, in case the men are watching. Oh, I also got crumble. I got the monster cookie. I didn't finish it. This is what I left. Because it's literally right next to my nail place, so I just walked there. Anyways, I'm going to go home and then I'm going to wash my hair. And then we'll style my hair and then I'll talk about skincare. All right, I just finished washing my hair, as you can see. I'm about to show you guys my skincare. It's only like 4 p.m., but I'm gonna do my nighttime skincare anyway because I showered in the middle of the day and I wash my face and I don't know what else to do. My eyebrows are so grown out. I don't know if you can see. I always get questions on how I get my eyebrows to look like this. It's honestly, it's honestly mainly genetics, um, but also it's really, really important to find an eyebrow threading place that does you good. Like, I only go to one girl. I drive 30 minutes plus to get my eyebrows done every two weeks. I'm just cleaning mine up because I'll probably go tomorrow, but they're really bad. I use tretinoin most nights now. I've been on tretinoin for a few months. I started retinol end of August. Um, if you haven't heard of retinoids, basically they kind of just give you new skin. They increase... I don't want to say... Um, let me look it up actually. Retinoids are derivatives of vitamin A and basically what that does, it apparently increases your cell turnover rate in your skin. So it essentially literally gives you new skin. It increases the production of collagen and if you guys don't know what collagen is, it's literally what keeps your skin looking nice and young. So especially as we age, this thing is like gold. I started early because I knew I was going to be on it eventually and I've just heard so many good things about it. The only downside is that you purge for a few months. The internet says you purge um, from 48, four to eight weeks. That's not true for everyone. You can purge for much longer. A lot of people give up because the purging doesn't go away that fast and apparently you don't really see the results of retinoids until about a year. So I'm not at a year yet. And honestly, I'm not quite sure if I notice a difference in my skin yet. Also, I'm putting this on my clean face. I used to put it on after my toners, but I just do all my toners and stuff in the morning because honestly, I don't like having a long routine at night and I can avoid the tretinoin reacting to something else that I put on my skin. So at night, I just do tretinoin and my moisturizer, or since my forehead has been breaking out for a long time, as you guys know, I found out that benzoyl peroxide fix, uh, get, uh, treats the acne really well, so if I'm getting new spots, I put this on. 
I also, also, I was breaking out my forehead for a long time, like months, like six months probably. This camera blurs everything out. So look, you can see my scarring right there. So I struggled for a bit, but I found out it was literally because I was so stressed out and had so much anxiety that my skin was just breaking out because of that. And I thought it was purging from the retinol. So that's why I was just like, okay, it'll go away. But I was just like, I feel like it's not. So if you have acne or any other skin concern, my suggestion is to just trial and error because one, there are a million different causes and two, there are a million different treatments. So you gotta figure it out, but don't just give up. This is Sisaplast, so it's for chapped skin, but I saw this girl on TikTok, she puts a thin layer on her sebaceous filaments and she like wakes up with no blackheads and it's been working so well for me as someone whose only skin skin concern growing up was basically blackheads anyways retinoids so this is how they're classified there's retinol retinol and tretinoin so there's also different strengths of each you want to start at retinol about like 0.01 percent you have to be careful though because Tretinol is the only one that's um, has to be prescribed, so a lot of brands sell retinol. Just make sure you're not getting one with like crazy different ingredients and like stuff you don't need. Just be conscious of that. I was using the one from what is it? Which brand is this? The In Beauty Project. When I was up to one percent, I mean you, you should you should be fine with most, but if you have that app that's like Think Clean. Or think dirty. Think dirty. Yeah, it's literally called think dirty. You can scan like barcodes of stuff to see if it's toxic or not. I just put on this moisturizer. I really like the mugwort cream from this line. I just ordered the road kit with all their skincare, so we'll see how it works. But in the morning, I have a ton of toners because you want to obviously you're moisturizing your skin, but a lot of people don't hydrate. My problem before, as well as my blackheads before, was my skin was dull and it looked lifeless and my complexion was super uneven and it was because my skin was not hydrated. So I started incorporating toners that are water-based. Also, I think, which one has hyaluronic acid? No, this one has niacinamide. Oh no, this one has hyaluronic acid. I'm pretty sure hyaluronic acid and niacinamide are hydrating. I could totally be wrong. And then I just have random ones that just really help to hydrate my skin. And I noticed a huge difference from those. Like my skin glows, if that makes sense. So I do all that in the morning. And then I have this green, green serum. But yeah, just make sure you're hydrating your skin as well as moisturizing it. A lot of people don't hydrate. And I feel like that's where they go wrong. All right, it's time for hair. So after I oil my hair, I go in with a clarifying shampoo because oil is sometimes hard to get out of the hair. And then I go in with a second shampoo. I kind of just randomly buy from Amika shampoos. This one, I think it's for shine. Yeah, soft and shiny hair. And then, oh, I forgot to cut. Okay, I just realized I forgot to condition today. But I do this mask. I kind of, I think I like the orange one better, um, especially since my hair isn't as dry anymore, but this hydrating mask is awesome, as well as their orange one. Um, and I just wash my face with this. Also, all my skincare is from a Korean skincare website called SokoGlam.com, S-O-K-O Glam.com. Um, for skincare, Korean skincare is amazing. I have no complaints from it, so... Um, I know I just said I ordered from Road, but I have been using Korean skincare for almost a year now, and I... Adore it. I apologize if this video is super messy because I didn't even know I was recording this video until today and I definitely could have prepared better and like sectioned it off better. But I literally just did this off the top of my head because I obviously was like, oh, I'm gonna post twice a week, but I didn't do anything to vlog this week. So I was just like, oh, fuck it. Because I just had to wash my hair today. Anyways, this is a heat protectant that I'm using, the Kerastase Nectar Thermique. Thermique? Um, I put, a, I put a ton of it in my hair. I kind of coat my hair with it. And then I'm going to go in with my Dyson Air Wrap. I'm going to dry my roots first. So I'm going to put, like, honestly a generous amount of this. And it smells really, really good. My hair. And I know I'm not the person that looks like they should be giving out hair advice, but I've been learning, guys. Also, do what you want. Do what works for you. People think that... They know everything, and me telling you my routine is not does not mean oh this should be your routine. Does that make sense? Like you're free to do what you want and do what works well for you. Try out different things and see what you like best. 
I'm gonna go in with this guy and dry my roots. Obviously, you can use pretty like literally any blow dryer. Um, but I feel like everyone starts off with drying their roots because you're just supposed to, right? <laughs> Now that I've done that, I'm going to section my hair probably into two parts and then I'm going to take the brush attachment. You can honestly do this with a blow dryer and a hairbrush that's breathable, obviously like through the back. And I just comb through my hair before I go in with the air straight and I will tell you why in a second once I'm done with this. So I'm going to do this first. I do this until my hair is like 80, 70, 80% dry before I go in with my air straight. Don't completely dry your hair during this step. If you decide to do this routine for some reason, um, only go to like 80%. My fucking camera just ate shit. It was resting on this speaker. I literally, oh my God, I can't believe it. it's working. It fell off. I went to try and go catch it. It rolled off my hand and lit, hit my freaking uh, weight thing and then hit the floor i literally and it was not it was like like um twitching trying to um get the lens open and closed jeez dude i'm gonna try it one more time see if it works <sighs> okay honestly it is struggling i don't know sometimes the lens comes out sometimes it doesn't i just took the wide angle lens off kind of like it without to be honest dude i'm kind of might not put it back on. I think it's too heavy. I tried to save it, but it just... And the only reason it fell, because this thing is so heavy in front of it, that obviously I can't balance it on things like I used to be able to. Anyways, um, after this step, my hair's honestly pretty dry. I fumbled. Actually, I mean, I'll be fine, but I'm going to retire the air wrap and go in with the air straight. So air straight, if you guys haven't heard of it, I'm about to show you, but... Um, it takes your hair from wet to pin straight and I could have just automatically went um, went in with the air straight but I do notice that when I use only this it leaves my hair looking dry like you know when you apply heat and your hair just kind of like obeys I feel like with this it stays frizzy and it looks super dry and brittle so that's why I go in after I do all this now but still this thing is magic dude because if you're someone with her curly hair that constantly straightens their hair like this will be a lifesaver for you I know it's not cheap but if you're straightening your hair every day or even more even if you be putting a straightener on your hair at all like this does not damage your hair nearly as much as a strainer Yeah, I can touch the. It's warm, it's hot, but I can touch it. It feels wrong too, but it uses a little bit of heat and pressure. So when you clasp your air onto it, the air pressure straightens your hair. And you see, I've only done two passes and my hair is pretty, it's pretty damn straight, the section that I straightened. Who doesn't love a straight bob? Y'all see all the dead hair still though? So this is like not even 15 minutes after the last clip. I love this thing. Yes, it's expensive, but think about all the time you're going to be saving and all the non-damage, the damage you're going to be preventing to your hair. If you're someone who religiously likes their hair to be pinned straight, I highly, highly suggest. So, last one at least, I go in with the Kerastase. I can honestly do any hair oil. I like this one a lot. I also like the way one because it smells like honeysuckle. But I just do this on the mids to the ends. And then once I've kind of put it all through the hair, I take the excess. And then I put it on my flyaways at the top so my hair can be sleek. So this is the end of the video. We went over hair, we went over nails, and we went over skin, the big three. Um... I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any more questions, comment down. I love you guys. I will see you next time. Hmm, I'll probably have to edit in New York. Next video is going to be a shoot, a young lady for her shoot, and then a New York vlog because me and Carla are going to New York for two days. So see you then. Bye. Love you.